You are Comrade Ivan Ivanovich Privalov. In 1961, you were selected for the Shukovgrad Interonaut Exploration Programme SSSR. Despite failing your basic physical and being caught cheating on your entrance exams, on the morning of the 12th of April 1962, you boarded a rocket drill containing the experimental device Little Orpheus with the purpose of descending through the Earth's crust to discover the relative hollowness of the interior and its suitability for colonization. No, you've lost me, General. Did I do what? You and Little Orpheus were dropped into an extinct volcano to drill to the center of the Earth and find out if we could establish a city there. Note, if you will, that this date is over three years ago. Ivan Ivanovich, can you describe Little Orpheus to me? Of, of course. <laughs> it was uh, large and round and had something of a disagreeable smell. I was referring to its technical specification. Well, General, I am no man of science, but it had this uh, radio thing that I was supposed to use to let the surface know I had arrived. And uh, some sort of battery wrapped in this lead box. But I was told to not touch anything under any circumstances. And I did notice the engineers who worked on it were quite a shifty bunch. The little Orpheus device contained a radio transmitter capable of sending a signal through miles of solid rock. In order to boost this, a powerful energy source was required. An atomic bomb, comrade Prevalov. An atomic bomb that you have lost somewhere below the Earth's crust. Ah, yes. That bomb. <laughs> of course, General, I can explain everything. But it is a long and uh, somewhat complicated story. And let me assure you, this is not a case of milking chickens. But you won't understand where your bomb and little Orpheus has ended up unless I start at the very beginning and you let me tell you where I've been for the last three years. From the beginning, then. But this had better be good. Good, General? It's more than good. It's extraordinary. And it began like this. An extraordinary sight. 
I realize this must be the fabled land of Plutonia, as documented by the brilliant scholar Obrachev. A trail of destruction carved by the rocket drill led down into the wild and mysterious jungle. The rocket drill itself must have snapped in half somewhere below Kamchatka, and little Orpheus bounced out and became lost in that prehistoric forest. If I was ever to get home, my mission was clear, to find little Orpheus. myself and plunged deeper into that prehistoric jungle where insects the size of dogs buzzed around. Dogs? What sort of dogs? I beg your pardon, General? Large dogs or small dogs? Big like an Avchaka or small like a Barlonka? Does it really matter? Of course. Detail is all important. Avcharka then, General. The size of an Avcharka. I find that very hard to believe. Would you find it easier if they were the size of a balanca? No. But I am enjoying your attempts to persuade me. Another part of the rocket drill, but still no sign of little Orpheus.
between the trees, I could see huge beasts, larger and more ancient than any known to our modern times. Could it be that Obrachev was right? And deep below the Earth's surface, prehistoric monsters still roam freely. Yes, yes, but little Orpheus. Terrible lizard intent on making a snack of me was none other than the most awful of the monsters, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, now you are an expert on dinosaurs. Oh, hardly an expert, General. Just educated by the best schools in the world, like all good socialists. And I remembered one crucial thing. I'm listening. Well, uh, its greed is without bottom. Its hunger is ferocious, but its brain is absolutely tiny. So it can roar and roar as much as it likes, but it will never be a match for the sharpened mind of the good Soviet worker. All I needed was a plan to outwit the monster. <laughs> 